thank you and good afternoon. So today I would like to share with you some observations and investigations regarding the emerging market of urban air mobility, its impact on the built environment, and its potential reform to the way we approach urban architecture and commercial development. For the past 12 years, we at Design have collaborated with our clients across the globe. In the and in recent years, as you've already heard, uh, we've noticed the increased focus TOD projects, which target sites that are part of a multimodal transportation network, uh, increasing the catchment area for those development sites, and ultimately increasing the value and the growth of those sites. The next evolution of that network would ultimately be to include automated and intelligent uh, transportation vehicles, which consider expanding that network vertically up into the sky, uh, creating a part of what we consider a new smart city ecosystem. With this in mind, in conjunction with our parent company, Aegis, we began a dialogue around the potential impact of UAM, and we captured those considerations arguing and considering what's driving its development, what are the barriers, what are the players involved in terms of government bodies, manufacturers and operators, and what will be the impact to the required infrastructure. With 60% of the world's population, some 4.7 billion people, estimated to live in cities by the year 2030, this migration towards these urban nodes is fostering the growth of mega cities to which we are familiar with, Shenzhen, uh, Guangzhou, Beijing. With increased population and de demand in these areas, the existing transportation networks will need to evolve with innovation and the approach to transport and mobility will become an urgent necessity. This will require governments and private companies to address new challenges and opportunities associated with the emerging technologies, such as autonomous passenger drones. Our investigation sought to define those challenges and identified seven key areas of focus. Social acceptability, considering the potential class uh, divide that may result from the limited access to the resource. Uh, insurance, considering the multiple parties involved to make the system work and who would bear the responsibility. Environmental policy, including noise, and vision, pollution, as well as emissions the advanced technology required to monitor and control the autonomous vehicles, considerations of public use, safety regarding government aviation criteria for certification, and land use required to support the infrastructure for charging station storage and vertebra ports. While autonomous drones, uh, in terms of passenger um, drones, has occupied the central focus of the discussion to date, it's important to note that many ways, there are many ways in which the drones will be implemented into this network, including surveying, asset management, cargo delivery, and recreation. This collection of various uses defines the ultimate definition of urban air mobility, as well as advanced air mobility. Look back, uh, the idea of escaping the congestion of traffic below has been an evolving technology for, for quite some time. Uh, here you see the Convair, one of two prototypes developed back in 1947, some 70 years ago. This is also an idea which has been imagined and reimagined looking forward. Um, looking at the idea, again, of escaping that traffic below, uh, and has been revisited by cinema for the last 100 years. Envisioning both the vehicular technology required to achieve this and the urban infrastructure in which it inhabits. With significant investment being made in the technology at the moment to the tune of 1.17 billion in 2020 and 1.13 last year, uh, we would seem to be at a confluence of multiple technological advances uh, driving and incentivizing the investment uh, in technologies such as 5G networks, AI advancement, autonomous navigation, battery improvements, electric propulsion, and the proliferation of drone technology to the mass populace. These ultimately transforming that, dis trans transforming that distant future into a viable present. With commercial airlines looking to lower their full fuel cost and uh, apply comply with the increasingly strict emissions required 
uh, looking at the global passenger numbers expected to double by 2040. Major airlines and manufacturers are heavily investing in the electric aircraft market with two key goals. One, to re replace the fuel burning jets which are used for the short haul trips, those less than 500 miles. Replace those with electric aircraft which complies with about 45% of global flights. And secondly, to promote the aerial ride-sharing service for future urban mobility as the future of, of our urban networks, a market they project to be worth more than $150 billion in the next 12 years. This market continues to grow into a much larger, larger ecosystem and has spawned some 160 electric aircraft companies globally and 300 plus different vertical, uh, vertical takeoff vehicles worldwide. While sustainability is one of the key drivers of this market, specifically for passenger drone development, uh, they will actually be unable to compete with small electric cars. They will emit much less CO2 than a helicopter, albeit, um, but they will likely emit more than an electric car, and in terms of energy efficiency in an urban context, drone flight is expected to be 60% less efficient than the vehicle, than the car. This positions ultimately UAM in the sweet spot, uh, not as a substitute for ex existing modes of transportation, but an augmentation of that existing system to complement the five to 300 kilometer range uh, with travel times on par with speed rail, lower feeder distribution times than aircraft, and faster journey times than conventional rail. Is this integration into larger transportation networks that holds the promise for UAM? And with the electrification of multiple nodes of transportation, such as water taxis, autonomous vehicles, and personal vehicles, the smart city of the future will be an electric-based multimodal network with more efficient, that can more efficiently serve all scales of the city. It is this integration, integration and layering of the technologies into an accessible platforms that will define the smart cities of the future. The combination of multi-purpose autonomous vehicles and, and seamlessly integrated information systems will be the key advances that will augment, augment the existing transportation network, enabling UAM to deliver on the promise of faster, low emission journeys, smarter, more efficient use of the urban infrastructure, reduced traffic congestion, and limited impact on environmental areas. So considering that the drones are coming, and with more importantly, the associated evolution of the existing infrastructure, we've considered three implementation models of how this might manifest itself in the urban environment. The preservation model geared towards more natural environments. The parasitic model, which is considered for existing heavily developed cities. And the symbiotic model, which will focus on continually and currently developing urban environments. For the preservation model, UAM passenger drones and similar vehicle solutions can serve to mitigate the impact of development within natural environments. In the case of this waterfront master plan development, with the site defined by mountainous terrain cascading down into a marina below, we provided more than 820,000 square meters of retail, boutique hotel, luxury waterfront, and cliffside residential. A critical natural asset of the site is a shallow coral reef, uh, which effectively blocks the entry into the marina for large and medium scale yachts. As an alternative to modifying the seabed, potentially destroying a section of the coral reef, could we re rethink the access methodology uh, and preserve the natural amenity of the site? So by locating the docking point for the large yachts offshore with an integrated vertiport, that provides direct access to key nodes within the master plan. We propose to not only preserve the reef, but to also offset the requirement for an elaborate road network that would be required to navigate the higher elevations where assets are also located. For the parasitic model, uh, based on a city such as Paris, considers more developed urban fabric in which supporting UAM infrastructure will be grafted into and onto the existing fabric of the city, such as open and underutilized areas, where 
waterways are available, we propose utilizing floating barges as mobile vertiports as a scalable solution, the quantity and location of which uh, can be adjusted to accommodate population fluctuations uh, such, as, such as you might have for associated large events as festivals or even the Olympics. Additionally, we propose to utilize existing infrastructure such as bridges, underutilized areas of open land and plazas, and decommissioned and repurposed transportation infrastructure to serve as a location for these vertiports for UAM. For the large master plan project we are currently developing in the Greater Bay Area along 1.2 kilometers of waterfront, nestled amongst existing heritage buildings and landscapes, we are again providing 1.2 million meters square meters of retail, office, and SA provision. The challenging aspect of the site, uh, the over a dozen individual plots, and adequately linked them to the four metro lines that sit below. Again, following that model of developing sites directly or related to integrated transport. With this position along the river, we've identified the waterfront as a key connection amenity with the capacity to provide connections along the waterway through the use of electric powered water taxis, uh, providing regional connect connectivity to the neighboring districts. The master plan is designed as a highly pedestrianized environment with three levels of pedestrian bridges linking across the sites and the complex network of basement retail connections between the plots, all with urban core connections down to the metro lines below. Not quite a boring plan, but with the requirement of 2,800 cars parking to maximize the connectivity and efficiency of the parking below grade, we've unified the basement areas beneath the road network. Now, albeit more efficient, um, one can question the quantity of the parking provision for a mode of transportation that is set to be reduced in the near future. Considering the continued development of the wider master plan in this area, is it possible to consider offsetting the parking requirement for the adjacent, plot, adjacent plots by utilizing the constructed parking in the current site as a sustainable method to limit the number of vehicles in the, in the area? Lastly, for the symbiotic model, such as the city of such as Shenzhen, the opportunity to integrate supporting infrastructure into the urban fabric from the onset uh, as the city develops is, is a much, much appreciated opportunity. This allows for the simultaneous consideration of the road network and elevated UAM networks that sit in the urban cor corridors above. The use again of the open spaces and rooftops adjacent to the site. The opportunity to ensure charging and infrastructure for the electric vehicles which will populate the trans transportation network. And considera considerations of basement car park and basement future proofing. As is the case with TOD developments, the increased connectivity is directly related to the increased land values uh, along the corridor. Similarly, uh, the connectivity generated by the addition of low altitude corridors through the urban network may further increase the real estate value of develop developments along that corridor. And at a, mic a micro scale within individual buildings, the introduction of vertiports within the refuge floors of a tower may augment the existing value plan within the section of that tower. For this TLD development located in Shenzhen, we provide 1.1 million square meters of office, residential, retail, and hotel. As a TLD development, we evaluated the pedestrian access and to and from the site, noting the substantial amount that's already coming from the public transportation networks. With the adjacency to multiple primary road networks, there's the potential to utilize mid and high level airspace above the urban corridors for UAM networks. This could consideration led us to look at the available roof areas, the lower, larger, multi-vehicle, high capacity vertical ports on the lower zones, and the taller roofs vertical access for vertiports. In order to achieve cross-plot connectivity, we created a 30,000 square meter elevated 
by providing connectivity through the site. And similar to the previous model, with 6,700 cars and 336,000 square meters of parking required, distributed across five, five basement levels, cost becomes a major factor and a major consideration in the volume of car parking versus that over a quarter of the cost of construction is dedicated to the car park. A provision which may not be required in the not so distant future. So the question we began to ask ourselves is how can we begin to think more creatively and with a longer lens about how these spaces can be designed with the future in mind. Are there considerations of floor to floor heights that are currently optimized for today's parking requirements but that might be designed in the different way with higher floor to floor heights with a future use in mind? Is it possible to repurpose or retrofit these basement areas for amenities for the public? Can we consider leasing these spaces to other parties, private parties such as an Amazon distribution warehouse? With UAM in mind, could these spaces be used as storage for autonomous vehicles, either passenger or cargo? And could we consider leasing the space back to the city for utility services such as district-wide automated refuse collection? So with the idea of minimizing the use of vehicles coming to the sites that we are developing, these are some of the topics that we at Tim Design are currently exploring relative to UAM with our current projects and our clients, ultimately looking forward to the future of our urban environment. Thank you.